Hi, today we're going to look at creating a parallax image, I think that's what they're really called, but more often than not they're called turning a 2D image into a 3D image. So if we look at this video here, as you can see you kind of get an illusion that it's not a 2D image because the background is moving slightly differently to the foreground, which is what you'd have in real life. This was obviously done in Jashaka because it's a tutorial for Jashaka, so I'm just showing you how to do it. So first and foremost, I went and I got some pictures. Uh, I actually got two different pictures. I got a foreground and I got a background. I then went into GIMP and merged both of these into one single picture. I don't know why, I just thought it'd be nicer to have some scene that actually doesn't exist somewhere in the world. I then the foreground and the background, I eliminated both of them. Uh, isolated both of them, saving them out as PNG files. So this space where you can see is white here. It's, it's only white because the background on the photo viewer is white, but it's actually transparent and it's saved as a PNG file, which is what Jashakan can read. So I'll just close these down. So loading up Jashaka, I uh, just give me one second. I loaded up, as you can see, my foreground and my background. Now what I did is I went into animation leave your world box unchecked. If it is checked, uncheck it so you get a nice black background. Zoom out a little bit. Click on add layer, obviously twice because we're having two layers. Oh, you can get a more complicated image and you can have a foreground, a middle ground and further away and you could have even more layers. So going with your bottommost layer, which I'm going to assume is my front layer, I'm just going to add in my front image. Then taking my uppermost layer, I'm going to keep that as my background and in my back image. Pretty simple. Now, a trick I like to do is I like to decrease the transparency on my images so I can kind of see my workspace. So as you can see, you can see a small amount of the red border coming through and that's basically what the camera is going to see. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. As you can see, our picture is a lot larger than what our workspace is. So I'm going to actually scale that down. The foreground I'm going to scale down only like by a little bit. About mine, as you can see and the background I'm going to scale down a little bit more because in reality stuff is smaller the further away it is. The other thing I'm not scaling it down for another reason is because we're going to actually push it back in the Z axis so it's actually going to scale down naturally anyway. In fact on that basis I'm going to increase this slightly. And I'm going to push it back to about 150 and the foreground I'm going to push that back on the z-axis as well, it's about 150. If, if you're wondering how I'm doing this, I'm just keep just hover over the number button, press left mouse button and then scroll left or right to move your... So as you can see we've now got this picture which looks okay. So now we go into our world layer I'm going to zoom in a little bit and on the controls in the world layer we've got rotation and translation. So I want to go in this top corner here, I want a bit of rotation and then I want to pull out to see as much a, a pretty much full on view as we have here. So I'm actually going to go to frame 3 because I've made my composition 4 minutes long. You can change that yourself as well just by dragging backwards and forwards. <coughs> so I'm at 3 seconds, oh, I'm going to press keyframe plus. Now I'm going to go back to my first frame and I'm going to set it up how I like it. So I'm going to bring this in because we want element of zoom. I want it further up in the air. I want a little bit of rotation as if I'm looking up. I want a little bit of Y rotation as well. And I think that might just be enough. And if I click on keyframe there, then we play that through, as you can see, we have our thing. Now it looks a bit weird, the reason it looks weird is because I haven't actually changed the transparency back, so put the transparency back up, and let's play it through. Here we go, obviously if you spend more time on it, get a better picture, have more of a an idea of what you're doing, because obviously this is just a very quick hash up of what to do, you could probably make something very very good. This was just a quick technique to show you proof of concept. At this point you just put it to the front, render it out and then you could get 
render it out to a file somewhere on your desktop and use it in whatever program you wanted. Thank you.